to the Cake Sugar Coach podcast. Join me each week as I interview experts who will share the science of sugar, sugar addiction, and different approaches to recovery. We hope to empower you with the information and inspiration, insights, and strategies you need to break up with sugar and fall in love with healthy whole foods so you can prevent and reverse chronic disease, lose weight, boost your mood, and energy. Feel free to go to my website for details on my coaching programs and to access free resources, kicksugarcoach.com. I have with me today, Catherine Arnston, 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 sorry, who is the CEO and founder of a company called Energy Bits, which promotes really clean sources of both spirulina and chlorella. And she's here to talk about the science of how this is truly a superfood. And for those of us that have been struggling with processed junk foods, overconsuming, uh, you know, processed carbohydrates, this is this is a superfood we need to know about. So she's here to talk about her years, 13 years of deep diving as a citizen scientist into the science of what the superfood can do for our bodies. And I have invited my daughter Sky. Never before have I ever had my daughter Sky on a summit interview, but she's newly discovered spirulina and chlorella she is gaga about its benefits and so she was like I thought this would be a really fun interview for her to join me and join us so welcome Sky welcome Catherine oh so glad to be here and I I love the mother-daughter combo (laughs) you just so uh, yeah it's really great women power (laughs) (laughs) and Canadian power just to toot the Canadian horn yeah yeah I'm Canadian born and raised educated spend most of my life there so although I live in Boston now (laughs) yeah yeah well Catherine how did you how did you get started how did you discover the healing power of of spirulina and chlorella yeah, because uh, I call myself, uh, I'm trying to decide, you can tell me what, what you like, which moniker. I don't know whether to call myself the algae gal or the voice of algae. <laughs> but uh, somebody needed to speak up for this stuff because it's been around for 4 billion years. And it is especially, you think, how could someone become an expert on algae nutrition? Oh, wait a second, I've got my microphone. I forgot to set up for you. So um, as I said, I mentioned I live in Boston, but my family's all in Canada still. And 15 years ago, my younger sister in Toronto developed breast cancer. Now, I want to assure you that she's completely healed and we celebrate her being cancer free every year. But sorry, I just dropped something. (laughs) Oh, good. Oh, good. We'll have to edit that out. So 15 years ago, as she was preparing for her chemotherapy, her oncologist, which is a cancer specialist, told her she needed to change her diet to an alkaline diet. Now, they didn't tell her why or what it, what it was, but she said it would be uh, important for her healing. So my first thing my sister did when she got home from that appointment was call me, her big sister who loves her. I knew nothing about nutrition. I was an MBA from Western uh, doing international business, but I love my sister and I'm a good researcher. So I said, don't worry, I'll figure this out. And I did. And it turned out to be mostly a plant-based diet because of the chlorophyll and the phytonutrients that have been proven for centuries, really, to build your immune system. So I researched foods for her to eat, ones to get rid of. She did go through chemo. She completely healed. And uh, we I see her and celebrate with her every year. But in the process of helping her, I started learning about plant-based nutrition. I read uh, hundreds of articles on PubMed. I must have read 20 books. And this was 15 years ago. And nobody Literally nobody was talking about plant-based nutrition, not like they do now. So once I learned about what this stuff did, did, I thought, man, somebody has to tell the rest of the world. And I'm just a very um, proactive person. So I thought, well, I have no idea how I'm going to do this, but I'm going to tell the world. (laughs) So I gave up my career, went back to school, studied nutrition. Then I put a plant-based nutrition curriculum together. And this is what truly led me to algae, because as I was giving my lectures at corporations and hospitals, trying to encourage people to eat more vegetables, I found out that it was just too much work for everyone. Vegetables are heavy to carry home from the grocery store. They take a long time to clean, to cook, to eat. They go bad quickly. Some people get gas from them. Kids won't eat them. Husbands won't eat them. I thought, okay, if I can't get people to eat vegetables... I need to find a way to get the nutrition of vegetables into them in a way that was effortless. 
Once again, I had no idea what I would find or where I would find it, but I went back to everything I'd found for my sister and just did a deeper dive on the science. And once I got to algae, the miracle happened because it turned out algae, first of all, is the most alkaline food in the world. And we can address that, why it's important for you and helping you get off the sugar train. It's also the most studied food in the world. First of all, algae is a food. Uh, people think it's a supplement, but I'm going to show you something. It's a food. It's a it's in, in all uh, water bodies, but it's grown in Taiwan, in China as a farm good. It's in in. Uh, fresh water. This is a spirulina farm. This is a chlorella farm. So it's a agricultural crop. It is not a supplement. And that's the reason that's important is because your body will absorb the nutrients better from food than from uh, supplements. So it's a food, uh, 100,000 studies documenting its benefits. It's a multi-billion dollar agricultural crop in Asia, where they have taken it, drum roll, daily, drum roll for 70 years. 70 years. By the way, the Japanese have the best longevity, lowest cancer rates, lowest obesity rates, and great skin and hair. And why should they be the only ones enjoying the benefits of algae? Because guess what? 99% of algae is grown in Asia, and 99% of it is consumed in Asia. The scientists and the consumers don't know outside of Asia, don't know anything about algae, what it does, why it works, that it's a food crop. So I'm here. Oh, by the way, it's also endorsed by the United Nations. It's been endorsed since 1974. That's 49 years ago. They identified spirulina as the answer to world hunger because it has three times the amount of protein as steak. There is nothing in the world with more protein than spirulina, and it's an eco friendly, sustainable crop. So United Nations has endorsed it. And guess what? Even NASA has endorsed algae for 50 years. They feed it to the astronauts. Why? Because it has a, they say it has a thousand times more nutrition than any other fruit or vegetable. But I saved the best to the last. So it's scientifically uh, 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 supported, uh, internationally endorsed, used safely in Asia for 70 years, and the best thing of all is it comes in tiny little tablets like this that you can just swallow or chew. I eat them all day long, but spirulina, we'll talk about the different algae. Spirulina satisfies your hunger and will really help you get off the sugar train. Chlorella pulls out toxins and builds your immune system. But check this out. Every single one of these tablets, look at how tiny they are. They're about the size of a baby aspirin. Every single one has the same nutrition as an entire plate of vegetables. But look. All you have to do is swallow them or chew them. Problem solved. You never have to worry about getting the nutrition that you need from vegetables ever again. You never even have to eat another vegetable again if you don't want to. But please do. <laughs> but please do, exactly. But this we've had mothers writing us saying, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. You've taken the stress out of dinner time because we fight with our children to get them to eat vegetables. And now they just have a a couple of tablets and they love them because their tongues turn green and they think that's really funny. So but we'll talk to you about the nutritional benefits, how this helps you balance your metabolism, balance your blood sugar, stops your cravings, satisfies your hunger, because you could have 15 of these or 20 for lunch, one calorie per tablet. And it will give you all the nutrition that you need for the day, protein, 40 vitamins and minerals, and you didn't have to lift a finger other than to swallow them down with water or chew them like I do. Not everybody likes the flavor, but mm -hmm. um, the benefits, I came up with this saying that about the benefits of algae are too, too um, simple to believe, but too powerful not to. It's crazy what this stuff does. And by the way, it was the first life on earth 4 billion years ago. You can only be the first life on earth once. And it was cyanobacteria, which is like spirulina. And I have a really cool thing to show you at the end of the discussion that um, will blow your mind about spirulina. It's um, it's a gift to us from mother nature, but it's never been explained properly. And I tell people, algae isn't new. It's just new to you. And think about it. Up until about 10 years ago, you didn't know about matcha, kiwa, maybe not kale, collagen powder, CBD, 
But these are things that have been used and grown in other countries for centuries. Uh, same with algae. Uh, a, it was the first life on Earth 4 billion years ago. The Egyptians used it 2,000 years ago. The Aztecs grew it in, in Mexico. It was their main food 250 years ago. It's been used safely in Asia for 70, 70 years. It's a multi-billion dollar crop there. It's as big as the beef industry is here. And you scratch your head and you think, well, that's crazy. Why, why don't I know about it? Well, it's not grown here. There's no patents because it's just a vegetable. There's no incentive for the food industry, the pharma industry, the biotechs to tell you about it, right? So that's yeah. what we do. That's what I've done. We are science-based. We educate people. We provide you the science so you know exactly why it does what it does. And the list is endless. And um, I designed all the packaging to be friendly so you don't think it's weird. There's nothing weird about algae, honestly. Um, and instead of saying to yourself, why should I take algae? You should be saying to yourself, why shouldn't I? <laughs> yes, yes. And I, I can appreciate because you're a CEO of a company and your background is international finance, that you might be the kind of person that has a bias, that you have a vested interest in the success of the sales of spirulina and chlorella, but I don't. And I can tell you that all of this hype is warranted and then some. So stick with us through this interview because this isn't just another, ooh, a flash in the pan kind of product that's going to come and go and it's going to have this shadow side or these side effects that, ooh, we didn't know about. It really, at the more, I, and I've been researching this almost as long as Catherine because I first got exposed to it when I went raw vegan about, gosh, Sky, you would have been in grade two. So I don't know, like 15 <laughs> years ago or so, right? And yeah. And at one point, Catherine, I had sort of, I used it a lot, felt really great on it, totally curbed sugar cravings, gave me energy. But then I'd heard something about heavy metals and there was a little bit of negative media around it and I kind of drifted away. So can you talk a bit about, because probably others have heard about that. What, what's the yeah. deal with that? So, well, um, thanks for asking because that's what makes us so special um, we sell our algae tablets on our website, energybits.com, but we're the only algae sold through functional medicine, chiropractors, um, biohacking centers, longevity centers, because of our purity and our safety, uh, because algae will absorb whatever's in the water. So you never, ever, ever, ever want to purchase algae that's grown in the ocean or lakes because you cannot control the body of water when it's wild. And just like um, people get angry when they see algae blooms closing their favorite beach, um, I remind people, algae only shows up as the cleanup crew. It actually will, it's, it kills bacteria. And another thing people don't know is that every water treatment plant in North America runs their water through algae because it kills bacteria. So it so it it shows up on your beach when there are already toxins there, but you can't see those toxins. So the algae will pu will pull them towards itself, and that makes the bloom toxic because it's absorbed the toxins that are in the water. So when you're growing it, it's impossible to um, to control. Uh, the environment if it's a lake or river. And there's a company that used to grow it in Klamath Lake, and I've got scientific papers that prove there's mycotoxins there. So mm -hmm. the way to pr pr protect yourself is to purchase your spirulina chlorella from a very reputable company. Um, and I consider ourselves one of the best, if not the best, because we go to great lengths to um, preserve the integrity of the algae so we can preserve the safety for the people who are using it. And you have to remember, I wasn't intending to start a company. No, I just wanted to help my sister. Mm -hmm. That was it. Mm -hmm. And then I learned more about algae and I thought, well, I could help a few more people. I mean, I, you know, and then I just kept going and suddenly, I, you know, 13 years flew by and I, here I am with a company. But my everything we, I did and continue to do is with the intent to be safe for people and give them the maximum benefit. So things like we grow our water, our algae in triple filtered spring mountain water. So it's absolutely pure, absolutely no toxins that can be absorbed. That's number one. Number two, and I do want to talk about mitochondria health if we can get to it, because mm -hmm. it's very important for um, your health and getting you off sugar 
or di- you know pres- stopping the diabetic train wreck that we're on. Mm-hmm. Um, so one of the key things is that almost all the other algae companies are lower priced and higher volume. So they have to get to market quickly. So they use high heat to dry their algae. We don't. And this the reason why this is so important is because uh, there's some very important antioxidants. They're very long words like superoxide dismutase that uh, are enzymes and enzymes are, ki- are damaged and killed by high heat. So you're missing a lot of these nutrients in these other com- with these other lower priced algae because they their enzymes are dead. Same with pigments. There's two important critical pigments in algae. The blue one in spirulina is called phycocyanin and has amazing healing properties. And the green one is chlorophyll. And both of them get damaged by high heat. And nutrition in general will um, always be decreased by high heat. So because we pr- we don't use high heat, our algae is raw. The only other algae I can frankly recommend, especially when it comes to spirulina, is frozen spirulina, because that's the only other one that has no heat, so all the nutrients are preserved. But the problem with frozen spirulina is that it's messy, it's hard to find, it doesn't travel well, expires quickly. I mean, we're talking to- Very expensive. Very expensive. Mm -hmm. Ours, which comes in tablets, and we have them in in, uh, little pouches that you can travel with, or we have these really cool canisters that come with a little travel tin. But we're talking to the Hippocrates Center about, you know, um, who will hopefully use our product, as well as another great institute um, called the Gershon Institute. And they heal people who are very sick uh, and they use uh, raw spirulina. But after their clients or patients have moved on, it's hard to get raw spirulina. So they're thinking of recommending um, our tablets because they're raw, because there's no heat that's been applied to them. So, uh, and the third thing is um, uh, with chlorella, well, we'll talk about the two with different algae, but spirulina is actually a bacteria. It's called a cyanobacteria. The reason why this is important is twofold. Because there's no fiber, zero fiber, no cellulose wall, it gets absorbed into your bloodstream almost instantly if you chew it like I do, (laughs) my green tongue, and within minutes if you swallow it. And so this helps balance your blood sugar almost instantly if anyone's hypoglycemic like I used to be. But chlorella, which we call recovery bits, has the hardest cell wall in the plant kingdom. And that hard cell wall needs to be cracked at production or your body wouldn't be able to absorb all the nutrients. So the technique almost everybody uses is the original one, which is they tumble it with glass beads and the the chlorella uh, hard cell wall is is technically crushed by the beating up with the um, with the glass beads, but the glass heats up <clears throat> and lead from the glass leaks into the chlorella. Oh. Now chlorella is supposed to be a detoxing algae. So the fact that it's getting led into it is not a good thing. So when I started the company, I learned that that might be a possible, a problem. So, um, but there was a new technique that had just been developed more expensive, but that's what we use. And we pass our chlorella through a sound chamber. So it's the vibrations that crack the chlorella. Somebody said from California said, Oh, you've got good vibrations in your algae. So, uh, <laughs> but this is just one, you know, one more example. I gave you three, but there's plenty more that separates us uh, from the traditional algae suppliers that you can find on Amazon or Costco or, or Whole Foods. Um, and all we do is algae. Almost everybody else who sells algae tablets, honestly, most of them have anywhere from 50 to 500 other products. They don't spend the kind of time and um, attention as I do and we do because this is it for us. Like we're, I'm an algae expert. I like going deep and uh, rather than broad. And so that that allows me the ability to provide a higher quality product that's safer for you. You can give ours to newborns, children, teenagers, pets love them, grandparents, and never have to worry about the safety factor or metals or toxins. I mean, we do microtoxin testing, we do nutritional testing, we do heavy metal testing. So, um, because we sell through doctors and they have to, they have to know. Mm, incredible. Oh my gosh, the gratitude. I can imagine people are thinking, oh, thank God, this kind of integrity in industry, right? That 
this is your one baby and you're getting it right and you're testing and thank you so much for doing all this and bringing this to the world. I can vouch for the fact that my cat and my dog both used, I used to give them sports, chlorella, I think it was chlorella ta- tablets and they would gobble them up. Totally. Yeah. It isn't yeah. just humans. Um, and I do, I do chew them. I love the flavor of it. But I, do I, too. Think, I think it, maybe it took me a while to get there. Like, yeah, maybe not out of the gate, but over time, there's something that the body goes, Oh yeah, I'll, yeah. I like that. Let me pop a few in and before, after a meal. Sky, do you have a question? Yeah, I just wanted to say for me, I don't love the taste of spirulina. And so every morning I make myself a juice, like a fresh green juice, a cold pressed. And I will add in just like a scoop of spirulina. And I find that it goes down no problems. Yeah. And um, yeah, it's easy peasy. (laughs) Yeah. Well, the great thing because of the tablets, and again, they're very, very small. Um, they're about the size of a baby aspirin. Most people do swallow the spirulina. That's the blue green algae. See how it's darker because it has that blue pigment plus the green one. Mm-hmm. But the chlorella, which we call recovery bits, it tastes like a soy nut um, or, or a sunflower seed. And it tastes delicious with pistachio nuts. I have a flavor, uh, salt and vinegar flavor. And I eat these all day long. So if you were going to try chewing them, I would suggest starting with the chlorella, but again, and we'll get to the benefits in a minute. Um, when it comes to getting off sugar, I would generally suggest spirulina. If you could only choose one, I would suggest the spirulina because it's so satisfying for your hunger and um, and will help you get off the sugar um, sort of spiral much quicker than the chlorella will. But they're both and they both do amazing things for your body. So they're they're both equally powerful, but for different reasons. Well, let's let's go. Let's d- d- deep dive there a little bit. Tell us a bit more about the difference between spirulina and chlorella and when you might want to choose one or the other or both. Yeah. So um, I have a funny story. We actually have two brands of spirulina. One is called Ener- Energy Bits and the other one is Beauty Bits, but they are absolutely identical. And I'm not trying to trick anybody. It was just because. When I first started the company, that was the energy bits was our spirulina and chlorella was our recovery bits. But I found women didn't like the packaging or the name. And I started the company because my sister, so women's health has always been my number one priority. And, and Sky and I were talking about this earlier, the high protein, high antioxidants, high collagen build your skin and hair. So I made a second brand of spirulina and called it beauty bits. Uh, but they are identical, um, but I don't want you know people to be confused. So they this is what I would recommend in the mornings, the spirulina. And we um we generally suggest 10 tablets at a time, but you know, we feel NHL teams and they have 75 spirulina tablets before a game. Remember, it's food. Think of it like you would nuts. You know, you never have just one nut when you're hungry. You have a handful, right? So Take a handful of, of spirulina or in, later on chlorella because that will satisfy your hunger, give you energy, focus. There's one calorie per tablet, 40 vitamins and minerals, 65% protein in spirulina. So it has always been used as an energizing, a source of energy. It gives you mental energy, physical energy, and it also gives your mitochondria energy. So it's cellular energy. Now the energy you get isn't like you feel like you're going to jump off, want to jump off a tall building in a single bound. It's very, what I call quiet energy. You might not even notice it. It's just, you just feel fresh. That's it. No drama with algae. It's not a stimulant. So it's no sugar, no caffeine, no chemicals. Uh, It's very steady. But how great is that? You feel like you just had a great night's sleep or a walk in the fresh air in the wintertime. <laughs> and I know what that feels like having lived in Edmonton for a while. <laughs> so spirulina, very nourishing, very energizing in the moment, but also energizing at the cellular level, which gen- which the mitochondria generate ATP. And ATP is your cellular currency. It's used for everything, walking, talking, living, breathing, thinking. So everything you do is to protect your mitochondria. So you'll have more cellular energy. I tell people cellular energy is like money. When you have more money, you have more choices and you can do more things. 
when you have more cellular energy, you have more choices and you can do more things. <laughs> so mm-hmm. that's spirulina, very nourishing, satisfying. Have have them in the morning. Zero carbs, by the way, for those of you who are doing intermittent fasting, it's ketogenic. And I encourage you to try intermittent fasting. Usually people don't like intermittent fasting or ketogenic diets because they get hungry and they get tired. Doesn't happen with spirulina because it's an energizing, ketogenic, zero carb source of fuel and your body will absolutely love it. So how about throughout the the day? Mm -hmm. Throughout the day. So can I ask a a couple of questions about spirulina then? Is it a complete protein? Yes. Wow. It has 18 of the 20, uh, 20, 22 aminos, and it has all nine that your body can't make. So it is a complete protein, both of them, spirulina and chlorella. Okay. Uh, And uh, what was my second question? I know why, why does, why is it fuel for the mitochondria as opposed to other foods? Like what makes it unique to the mitochondria? Well, that's quite a long conversation. Uh, I can, I, I definitely want to get to that, but part of it is because it has unique antioxidants that aren't found in any other food that your body will make for you from the moment you're born until you hit 30 and then it stops making them. And and they're long words like superoxide dismutase and glutathione, but these antioxidants are the only antioxidants that can get into the inner membrane of the mitochondria to stop free radical damage. Vitamin E, vitamin C, you can eat a room full of blueberries and not a drop of antioxidants will get into that inner membrane of the mitochondria. And I will explain why and where that inner membrane came from uh, because it's, and it's all again, science-based. So because spirulina particularly contains the antioxidants that your body stops making for you after the age of 30, Uh, it can get into the inner membrane to stop that free radical damage, whether that free radical damage is in your skin, your heart, your brain, doesn't matter where it is. All 99% of inflammation or 90% is in, uh, is in mitochondria and 90. And so you've got to stop that inflammation because if you don't, then your mitochondria get damaged, which means they either die or they uh, communicate incorrectly. And this causes you to age or it leads to chronic disease. So protecting your mitochondria, it also is why people you know, have weight gain, um, hormonal imbalances. It all comes down to the mitochondria. Um, so spirulina is unbelievably powerful for protecting the mitochondria because it has these antioxidants that can get in there that um, other that, that no other foods contain. How do we know that? Like, I know you say this is science and I know you're a citizen scientist and one day you'll have your PhD and you'll be a world expert that you already are unofficially. And one day you will be officially with your PhD. But how do we know that that's happening with the mitochondria in the cell? Well, there's 25,000 studies that have been done on superoxide dismutase that show this. So there's, here's the problem with algae and the nutrients in algae. There's no shortage of science. In fact, there's too much. It's so overwhelming. Only a crazy person like me would take 13 years to deep do deep dives and connect all these dots. So th- there, it's irrefutable what superoxide dismutase does. The problem is it doesn't exist in any other food. So uh, I think there's 0.0000001% in cabbage. But the problem is even that 0.0001% in cabbage gets destroyed in digestion. So it's it's it doesn't exist in nature anywhere else except it also is in chlorella but there's more of it in the uh in the spirulina. And mm-hmm. it gets into the the uh, mitochondria for two reasons. Uh one is that it gets spirulina gets absorbed so quickly it's 99% bioavailable because it's a bacteria. There is no cellulose wall for your body to have to break down to gain access to any of the nutrients, including the superoxidismutase. Um, and, and we even did our own clinical trial uh, two months ago to test this very, very fact. Um, and I mean, I could tell you more about that, but it, it reduced inflammation in the, 
in the brains of these people that we were, we did e, you know, EEGs before and after, and we did the after EEG 30 days later, but we could have done it after seven days and we would have seen the same results. So, so the superoxidismutase is highly documented. The other important nutrient is called glutathione, which is an antioxidant. Now you can get IV drips of glutathione. It's a master antioxidant, but you can't get medicinal quantities of it in food. Spirulina has, I think, a thousand times or 2000 crazy number more glutathione than meat or just virtually any other source. There's nothing in the world. And we have lab tests to prove how much glutathione and superoxidismutase or these wow. pigments. So, so it's all documented. And glutathione is also something your body makes for you from the moment you're born until you hit the age 30. Yeah. And it drops and after 30, same with melatonin drops. That's why people, when you get older, you have a hard time sleeping because you don't have melatonin anymore. So, it's, it's, um, and there's a little bit of melatonin, not a lot in the two algae, but the glutathione also gets into the inner membrane of the mitochondria to stop free radical damage. And basically um, what you say to yourself, well, what exactly is it doing? And I, I do, I have some charts to show you. Here's one. So basically what the superoxidismutase does, it turns the free radicals into water. It's like having a fireman in your cells, just hosing down the free radicals because, um, and we jumped into the mitochondria without me giving some explanation. Maybe I can, un, I can back up a little bit to help people understand what the mitochondria are and why they're so important. But this is what superoxide dismutase does. It turns free radicals into harmless water. So it protects your mitochondria and the mitochondria DNA um, in a way that's not done by anything else in the world. In, in the universe. Crazy, well, right? That makes me beg another question then. So what struck me about the fact that 99% of the spirulina and chlorella is grown in Asia and eaten in Asia, but they've only been doing it for 70 years. Truthfully, that's not a very long time. Why does it not go back thousands? It does. It oh. does go back. That, but but you know, I'm, I just referenced something that was more current so that people could see that, you know, it's it's a food group that's quite normal in other parts of the world. As I mentioned, the um, the Aztecs in Mexico, they grew spirulina as their main food 250 years ago. Okay. And, and, and here's the sad thing that happened. When the Spanish came to Mexico and conquered them, they saw all these, th these things they thought were swamps and they drained them. The, the Aztecs had been powerful, strong, healthy up until that point because they were using spirulina. As soon as the swamps were drained, they all got sick and the Spanish took over. Mm. It's all documented in science. And before that, 2000 years ago, the Egyptians wrapped themselves in, in seaweed and spirulina for wellness benefits. Even in, in Africa, they've been making patties of spirulina they just grow it in you know big ponds it's not the safest but it's better than nothing as a main source of protein the, mm. as i said that so the um fact that spirulina or algae spirulina and chlorella have the highest protein in the world and edible protein wasn't discovered until the late 1800s by a dutch scientist and then the germans well he discovered it had the highest protein then the germans discovered that it had the highest edible protein. And there was a lot of research that went on in Germany in the early 1900s using chlorella algae. Now, there's a couple of interesting things that happened. There's a famous German scientist by the name of Otto Warburg, who won a Nobel Prize in I think the 30, 1930s or 40s for discovering that um, cancer could not exist in an alkaline environment. Now I'm circling back to what got me on this whole crusade, right? So, uh, and the reason for the cancer not being able to grow in alkaline environments is because there's a scale of zero to 14 of alkalinity and 14 is the high alkalinity. So healthy cells, their alkalinity is 7.1, just slightly alkaline. And when it's slightly alkaline, there's more it indicates there's oxygen in the in the cell, that the mitochondria are functioning properly, that there's communication that's going on. Once they become acidic, it becomes a place where 
cancer can start to, to grow um, and they, they start to uh, generate energy anaerobically. Um, so this, I think, is one of the reasons why my sister's oncologist wanted her to have an alkaline diet to help preserve the alkalinity of the cellular structure so that cancer couldn't grow. Now, here's another interesting thing. Your blood needs to be even more alkaline. It's 7.34. Remember, your cell is 7.1, your blood is 7.34. And so your body is so intelligent that if your blood became too acidic and it gets acidic, guess what? From sugar, processed foods, you know, all these acidic foods. And if you became too acidic, you would die instantly. So your body is so intelligent. So it goes like red alert, red alert, sugar, processed food, too much alkalinity or too much acidity. It pulls minerals out of your bones and of your cells instantly into your blood to neutralize it. So uh, that protects you. But when that happens over and over and over again, it, it depresses your immune system. It causes osteoporosis because your bones are where your minerals are predominantly stored. So my, again, my sister's oncologist was probably aware of this and wanted to ensure that she had uh, a nice alkaline diet to protect that uh, her immune system. And I haven't showed you this, but um, remember I, I said spirulina has the highest protein in the world. Chlorella has the highest chlorophyll in the world. Check this out. The chemical composition of chlorophyll is identical, literally identical to your hemoglobin. That's your red blood cells. Chlorophyll builds your blood. It's the most alkaline thing in the world, which is why she wanted an alkaline diet. And it builds your blood. So when you have healthy blood, you're going to have more nourishment going to your skin, to your organs, to your brain. And there is nothing in the world with more chlorophyll than algae. Chlorella has 500 times more chlorophyll than arugula, 25 times more um, chlorophyll than liquid chlorophyll. And I tell people, why would you take liquid chlorophyll when you could take chlorella? A, you get five, you know 25 times more chlorophyll plus you get protein, 40 vitamins and minerals, detoxing capabilities. So um, it's really the full the full solution and it builds your blood. And I haven't mentioned this yet, but chlorophyll is a fat-based pigment. Why is that important? Your cells are made of fats, also known as lipids. This is why people use omega-3, vitamin D, vitamin E to ensure that your cell walls are are moist because when they are have healthy fats, because they're made of fats, nutrients can get in and toxins can get out. Chlorophyll, because it's a fat-based pigment, behaves the same way. It This is why when you do cleansing, people do lots of juices and cleansing. One of the things that's happening is it's building your cell walls so that you can get those toxins out and put the nutrients in. I tell people it's sort of like um, think of chlorella, chlorophyll and chlorella as window washers for your cell walls. It's sort of like when you have dirty windows, you can't see out and you know uh, sunlight can't get in. When your cell walls aren't uh, don't have enough fats, um, you can't get nutrients in and you can't get toxins out. So chlorella is one of the ways to do that. Oh, incredible. All right. Sorry. I was... Going a little uh, detailed on the spirulina. So I know, on. I know. It, I, I'm sorry because it, almost whatever angle we go into or whatever topic, I mean, I I can give you so much detail. Yes, because uh, it's there. But yeah, so generally, spirulina is used for nourishment, hunger, weight loss, cutting your um, your hunger or your cravings really terrific for intermittent fasting. Um, and every single person in the world should be taking it because again, it's effortless and ours is safe and pure. Um, so that, and that's in the morning, afternoon, before a workout, boom, it's, it's fantastic. Um, but, and chlorella is equally important, but for different reasons. And, uh, we call ours, um, recovery bits because it helps you recover your health. So what's so different about recovery bits or chlorella? It's a wellness cleansing detoxing algae. Spirulina, just to remember, remind you, is a nourishing, energizing algae. Um, chlorella is detoxing. Now we talked already about the high chlorophyll, how it is nourishing for your blood, 
nourishing for your cell walls. Um, uh, only about five or 10% of chlorophyll actually gets absorbed in your stomach. The rest of it travels through your liver and your uh, through your colon. So very cleansing. It has the hardest cell wall in the plant kingdom. Spirulina has none. Chlorella has the hardest. And that hard cell wall attaches to lead, mercury, radiation, all heavy metals, alcohol, lactic acid, and chelates them and pulls them out. So very, very detoxing. Um, chlorella also has a little bit of fiber. So it feeds the gut biome um, what it needs to generate those short chain fatty acids that are important for your health. And your immune system, 70 to 80% of your immune system is in your gut. So when you are giving your body um, chlorella, with the chlorophyll and the 40 vitamins and minerals, um, you are helping he to heal your gut. Now, most people take the chlorella before bed. Now, we recommend you take it before bed. You can take it any time of day, but definitely before bed. And why is that? Your body goes through, and your brain, a detox and repair cycle when you are in deep sleep. And so if you have chlorella in your body, think of it as like street washers. Uh, your brain, by the way, shrinks a little bit when you're in deep sleep. So it can pull out the aluminum, uh, any kind of toxins in your brain and your body and get rid of them. And so having chlorella before bed facilitates a much better cleanse and detox. It also stimulates peristalsis, which is also known as a bowel movement. Um, and getting rid of, I'd say, getting rid of the junk in your trunk is uh, equally as important to um, your health as putting the right nourishment into your body to start with. So, uh, and chlorella also has the highest tryptophan in the world, which is a precursor to melatonin. So it does help you with a, um, a sleep. Now to help people understand the, the differences, um, because again, spirulina I'm recommending in the morning and during the day and chlorella I'm recommending at night. I, I came up with this analogy because I speak a lot at at hotels. And, you know, when we travel, we stay at hotel, everyone stays at hotels. And if you're treating yourself, you get room service. So I tell, I, I've come up with this analogy. Think of spirulina as room service. It delivers all the nourishment that you need for the day instantly, instantly and effortlessly. That's room service, right? And chlorella, because it cleans up everything in your body, think of it as housekeeping, room service, housekeeping. <laughs> doesn't get better <laughs> right and so passive too like such an easy easy yeah easy yeah on our, on our end no washing chopping etc yeah it's truly effortless and um you when you travel I mean I my the security people used to laugh at me because I used to travel with big bags of broccoli and I'd say I'm a nutrition you know whatever yeah. but you know it's not practical and so um you don't have to mix anything. Uh, you know, we take powders with you. If the lid comes off, you got green all over the place. Uh, these come in little pouches that you can just tuck in your gym bag or your, or your travel mm -hmm. bag. Um, mm -hmm. It just ensures that you're going to get the nutrition that you want, that you won't be, um, you know, migrating towards a, you know, sugar or, or bagels. Cause let's face it, we're surrounded by sugar and carbs and sugar is an addiction. And um, it's as, it, it's so damaging. There is not a single redeeming thing about sugar, except the fact that people like the flavor. But it's inflammatory. It's um, it's uh, uh, addictive. It causes so much damage at the cellular level. It causes wrinkles, ladies, because you get what it does is it causes your skin, it causes your elastin and your collagen to become damaged, and that causes wrinkles. So it, it's, it's, I look at people with lots of wrinkles and I can almost promise you that they eat a lot of sugar. Yeah. Um, so it's, if you want to preserve your health and your youth and your looks and your digestive tract, oh man, it, it causes so much candida in your gut, which are the bad bacteria. You know, there's or a fungi, on fungi. Here. Pardon me? Fungi. Fungi. Yeah. So uh, we, you know, and I, I tell people also, you know, uh, your might, you want to pr preserve your mitochondria. I, I, your mitochondria are, are on your side. They want to generate uh, energy, which will give you the fuel for living and breathing and thinking. Um, and I, and they love algae. And I'll tell you why in a few minutes. Well, we've already talked about a few of the things, but um, 
I, I, I tell people, I, I never eat alone. I'm, I'm always eating with my mitochondria. <laughs> nice. They're happy with me. <laughs> yes. Okay. I have so many questions, but let me just switch over to Sky and see. She's been so patient. Do you have any questions you want to jump in with, honey? Right now I have like a whole like notebook of notes based off of uh, chlorella and um, spirulina. And I'm just so inspired by it. Cause I'm like, oh, maybe this is like finally the answer to like healing some acne issues that I've had or like hair loss from COVID or things like that, that I can finally use to like kickstart my, my body and like bringing it back into like an alkaline state. Um, and so I'm super grateful to be here and witnessing this and learning all about the powers of these two super cool, I guess, like superfoods technically. So um, right now I'm good, but I'm definitely like eating all this up quite literally. And right now I'm like chomping at the bit. I'm like, I can't wait to like go to our pantry and get our chlorella and spirulina and just like throw it back um, and see, see how I feel. So yeah, so far so good too. I just recently started taking um, my own journey within spirulina and I've noticed a crazy impact and that's been within a couple of days. So I'm just so, and, and uh, you, we here. talked about this at the beginning to share with what's happened with you and your skin. Yeah. So I've definitely had, um, skin issues, I think probably for the last like five years. And I've had like some, some weeks of like chronic acne, like huge inflammation. Um, and then over the last, I would say week that I've kind of been taking it, my skin has cleared up so much. I feel like I'm glowing from the inside out. Um, I feel like I smell better, which is like kind of a benefit for me and everyone around me. So you're not just helping out yourself, I guess. You're also helping out other people. Um, so yeah, I've definitely, definitely noticed that. And you were saying, I think something about how there's um, collagen or something. Yeah, well, I did an analysis of the aminos found in collagen. By the way, collagen is not a complete protein. It does not have tryptophan. And I went through the entire list of aminos and the, on, in collagen powder and the entire list of aminos and the amounts in our spirulina. And in some of our um, uh, am aminos, we have 400% more than found in collagen. And just to help people understand about aminos. So your body can't absorb protein as protein. It has to break it down into amino acids. So um, animal proteins all bound up like that. Collagen is in what's called peptides. They're clusters of aminos. And so they get absorbed quickly. So it's kind of a fancy way of saying protein, but um, algae protein are already in individual aminos. So they get absorbed quickly. By the way, algae protein is the only sustainable vegan source compared to collagen and animal protein. Collagen, by the way, is made from ground up and melted down animal skins and hides and tendons and bones. Um, so it's not sustainable or eco-friendly. And by the way, they don't tell you this, but they use chemicals to melt all that stuff down. So ultimately not good for you and not good for the environment. Whereas algae is a sustainable eco-friendly crop with, um, gives you 200 times more protein per acre than animal protein. I mean, I'm not beating up on animal protein. I want people to eat good, clean, uh, grass-fed animal protein. But when it comes to collagen, I'm grateful that people have discovered collagen because it really does help. But you can up-level from collagen to algae because of the concentration of, of collagen and protein and the eco-friendly, sustainable nature of algae that can't be found in collagen. So it's, it's, it's better for you and better for the earth for sure. Um, and with your skin you know, um, and your breath, like I said at the very beginning, algae kills bacteria. Doesn't matter whether it's in the beach, in your poop, on your skin, in your breath. Um, bad breath is caused by bacteria. Food gathers in your teeth and bacteria start forming, and that's what causes bad breath. A lot of people who are carnivores have terrible breath because they always have food, meat stuck in their teeth. It's just the, so this helps with breath. So if you, those of you who have dogs, same thing, their breath will be fantastic. Um, but it's the, the blemishes are caused partly by uh, bacteria. There's also hormonal issues, but again, the spirulina and chlorella help balance hormonal issues. Um, we've had people 
tell us that um, it helps them with, with their periods. They don't have as much cramping because it's also what's called a vasodilator, opens up blood vessels, helps with headaches. It also helps with your with breakouts. So, you know, it does, it's so funny because you may take the algae because you want to stop your cravings, but you're going to end up with clearer skin or maybe you want to take it because you don't eat vegetables. Well, you're going to end up with... Um, uh, more energy because of mitochondria efficiency. It, it's really the gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's amazing. And the only thing I would say is don't be afraid to take a lot of it. Um, I'm suggesting 10 tablets just because I don't want to overwhelm people, but people have 30, 40, 50, 60 tablets. And if you have a health condition, you definitely want between 30 to 60 tablets. If you have cancer, heart disease, any kind of health condition, You want to double up or triple up until you get a clear diagnosis. Mm. So I imagine that there are people who do not do well. Maybe this is universally uh, agreeable to all bodies and all body types. And before I go there, actually, let me just reiterate that on our summit, we do not get into diet wars. I don't care if you're whole food plant based. I have, I don't care if you're carnivore. Like I trust you to figure out what whole foods work for you. All whole foods are fine in our books, just so that you're not hearing this and thinking we're bashing up on carnivores. Not I have friends and I have clients that are thriving for whatever reason that's working for them right now. And I respect that. Um, But I think your point about factory farms and the way we're pulling livestock off of farmland that used to regenerate the soil and was part of the ecosystem and like all of that, like if you haven't watched kiss the ground, you haven't lived yet. You yeah. haven't known what the word hope feels like because it is such an uplifting, hopeful movie. So I just want to clarify that we're not we're not picking on any people who uh, choose to eat meat. But the point still stands that doing our best to support the farmers who are who are creating regenerative uh, you know farms and produce and quality quality whole foods for us. Back to the question. So are there people who should not take spirulina or chlorella, or should go slowly like what sort of contraindications have you seen well the good news is there are zero contraindications for spirulina there is not a single living entity on earth that would not benefit from spirulina newborns children pets teenagers grandparents any uh, uh, cultural organizations. Uh, it's unbelievable. And, you know, again, I go back to the fact that it was the first life on earth 4 billion years ago. Stuff doesn't miraculously appear on earth for, for with, you know, without a reason. And you know, nobody knows why it started growing, but yes, it's un, it's so safe. If you get it from a good supplier, I can't speak for all vendors because not everybody is as careful as we are. But if you're talking about our products, yes, it doesn't, there's not a single living pregnant moms, nursing moms. I have the science to prove it. Um, it's instead of sending your kids off to soccer practice with a candy bar or a you know, protein bars, they like to call them, which is usually full of soy and sugar anyways, it's just disguised sugar. Uh, give them a handful of spirulina. Honestly, their performance, their focus, we have coaches and parents who give it to their kids who are autistic on the spectrum. What it does for the brain is unbelievable. And remember, it's food. This is not a drug. This is not a supplement. It's just very, very nourishing. And, you know, I will get to the mitochondria in a minute because I really want to show you something, uh, but very, very powerful. So now chlorella, um, there are a small number of people that don't do well on chlorella. Um, and, um, And also because it pulls out toxins and heavy metals and because there is a small percentage of drugs that have metals in them, uh, um, vaccines have have them. For sure, for example, you we just recommend if you're taking medications, check to see if there's any metals in them, and if there are, take the chlorella two hours before or after the medication. Spirulina, because it's a bacteria, gets absorbed quickly, within minutes or seconds. Chlorella, because it has a hard cell wall, takes about an hour and a half to get fully absorbed. 
So if you take it two hours before or after medications, um, you're safe. By the way, if is, is if there is anybody who is getting chemotherapy, um, it chlorella is unbelievable to take. You should definitely take this the day after your chemotherapy because it will pull the excess chemo out of your bloodstream. So you're not as nauseous and sick. This has saved so many people. Oh, so, wow. because, it, because it pulls the radiation. The United Nations used it at Chernobyl to pull out radiation after, um, after really? the disaster. Yeah, in, in fact, that's it's a very great story about how it also saved the people from Hiroshima who had radiation. That's, and that's why actually the algae industry is based in Asia. It was related to that whole incident. Wow. So, uh, so, so, um, we, you know, very small percentage can't tolerate chlorella. So if you have any doubt about it, we encourage you to either come to our website and get a sample pack or just go to Amazon. They're $6. Just take a few. You'll know instantly whether you're one of the, you know, one in 10 million that can't tolerate it. But um, it's rare, but it still does exist. I want people to know. But other than that, again, pregnant moms, um, uh, lactating, uh all kids just absolutely love it. Doesn't matter. It, pets, same thing. But <laughs> if you have, if you didn't want to worry, and your focus was uh, getting off sugar and balancing your blood sugar and having maximum nourishment, stick with spirulina at least to get started because right. it's a slam dunk. Not a single thing to worry about for sure. Wonderful. Thank you. And I'm glad you clarified that because I was like, I know that I do not want to do well with chlorella. I have to be so careful. Yeah. I can do two or three, but if I do more, I get a migraine. Interesting. Right? Yeah. Okay. And I, I know it's, I'm so sensitive. I'm always the one that's like the canary in the coal mine. Yeah. So it's, I think I'm just detoxifying too quickly, yeah. right? It's too yeah. much for my, for my pathways to handle. Yeah. So, I was glad you said that because I was listening to say, well, please let me not be the only person on the planet. So yes, yeah. I do. And spirulina is no problem, but chlorella for me, I've had to go slow and I love it and I prefer the taste of it and I still use it, but yeah. I am much more cautious with it. Yeah. Powerful and, um, and just so you know, um, like I was saying, 10 tablets of spirulina, 10 for chlorella. So 10 of chlorella will give you the wellness benefits but it won't detox. And this is probably what's happening to you. It's not enough to detox. Mm -hmm. You need 30 tablets at a time, maybe 20, but closer to 30 to detox. Cause here's what's happening. This is probably why you're getting your headaches. The chlorella naturally pulls toxins out of your cells. But if you don't take enough chlorella, it literally drops the toxins in your bloodstream. I think that's what's happening to you. There's a doctor by the do name of Dr. Klinghart, and, and he's been using chlorella for detoxing for 40 years. He's highly re re regarded, and he says the same thing. Mm. So you may want, you know, I invite you to try an experiment sometime, mm. and one night take 30 of the chlorella. And I I almost bet you won't have a hang or a headache because what's happening is it's not that chlorella that's causing the headache or other people get breakouts or just it's the fact that toxins have been they've been hiding in your cells now the chlorella is pulling them out and trying to remove them through your bloodstream or your breath or your urine or um, elimination but it doesn't get any further than your bloodstream it can't chelate them all the way out mm. so um so okay. you, so you you know might just try that see if it works. I'd be very interested. <laughs> yeah, thank you. You wanted to say one more thing about mitochondria. You wanted to show us something? Yeah. Okay. So as I mentioned, like mitochondria, people learn, know it's the you know powerhouse of the cell. It generates all the energy called ATP. And I'm going to show you how, what's going on. So here's your cell. And in your cell is your nucleus. And see these little peanut shaped things? That's your mitochondria. That's where your ATP is being generated. By the way, you have 2 million of these mitochondria per cell in your brain. That's why yeah, it's the highest concentration of mitochondria in your entire body. The second highest, by the way, is women's eggs, 600,000 per cell in your eggs. Basically, more mitochondria are where the greatest energy needs are. So it's your brain, your eggs, then your heart, and after that, your muscles. So here's the mitochondria. Here's a close-up of it. And this is where the ATP is being produced. 
But what you probably have never known is that your mitochondria have their own DNA. You have a regular 22,000 DNA, but mitochondria have their own DNA. There's only 37 of them. And the DNA is located exactly where the ATP is being produced. But here's the problem. A um, byproduct of ATP are free radicals. So your DNA is constantly being bombarded by free radicals because they're located exactly where the ATP is produced. So this is what causes your mitochondria DNA to get damaged because they are being fried every nanosecond. So there's two ways to stop the damage of your mitochondria. One is to reduce the number of free radicals. And how do you do that? By either a keto or low carb diet because carbs and sugar generate the most free radicals. This is another reason why you wanna get off sugar. It damages your mitochondria. But algae or fasting create virtually no free radicals. So the first way to protect your mitochondria is to remove or reduce the amount of sugar and uh, carbs. The second way to protect your mitochondria is to remove the free radicals, right? So, but the problem is that mitochondria has an inner membrane and virtually no antioxidants can get in there to remove the free radicals, except glutathione, melatonin, superoxidismutase, and chlorophyll. Now, mitochond or the algae have the three highest three concentration of, of four of these, chlorophyll, superoxidismutase, and glutathione. So now they can get in there and, re and remove those free radicals. So your mitochondria DNA don't get damaged. And remember I mentioned that the, you are born with uh, your body making these glutathione, melatonin, superoxidismase from the, from the moment you're born until you hit 30. And after 30, that's when they start decreasing and they get to almost nothing. And guess what? This is exactly the age when people start getting sick because their mitochondria are no longer being protected as they were when they were younger. And those antioxidants don't exist in, 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 in food. You can't get them, superoxidismatase just doesn't exist. So that's why spirulina and chlorella are so advantageous for protecting your health and your longevity because they offer your mitochondria the, um, the free radical, the antioxidants that they need to stop free radical damage. Now I'm gonna tell you the final piece, uh, piece de resistance about why you want algae. So you say, you say to yourself, well, that's interesting that the mitochondria have two membranes. All the other cells in your body have one membrane. But remember, I pointed out, the mitochondria have two. They have a fat membrane, lipid membrane, but they have that second one. It's like the it's like the ICE unit at a hospital. Nothing gets in there except these four antioxidants that you can find in, in, in mitochondria. So I'm going to tell you why and where that second membrane, which is actually the original membrane, came from. Remember I said at the very beginning that algae was uh, the first life on Earth? It was a cyanobacteria. It's all documented in science. It was an anaerobic cell, which means it, it, it flourished without oxygen. Why? Because at 4 billion years ago, there wasn't any oxygen on Earth. There was gas and water, no oxygen. Don't know. Nobody knows why this cell started growing, but it did. And after a billion years, it, it released enough oxygen because it generated ATP so that aerobic cells could start growing, but they didn't generate ATP as well. So the big aerobic cell said to the little anaerobic cell, I can imagine, hey, little guy, I see you're struggling there. How about we join forces? We'll protect you from the oxygen and you can generate ATP for us. And that's exactly what happened. The little cyanobacteria, like spirulina, got absorbed by the big cell. And guess what? it became mitochondria. No way. Yes way. Wow. All, it's called endosymbiotic theory. It's documented in any by any document in, in, in the PubMed about where, where did the uh, mitochondria come from? And here's, here's why there's two cell membranes. There's the original one when it was a anaerobic cell by itself, when it got absorbed by the bigger cell, the big cell just put a second lipid membrane around it but kept the original one. That's why everything, and remember spirulina is a cyanobacteria, everything that's in algae can get into the mitochondria and heal your mitochondria because they're family.
They're they're buddies. They're teamwork. They're family. Wow. By the way, another little fun little note. Mm. All the mitochondria DNA control absolutely, 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 absolutely everything in your body. And guess where the mitochondria DNA come from? The women. Your regular DNA, half come from the sperm, half from the eggs. Nope, not with them. The mitochondria DNA, it's all from the ladies. We are the power. We are the power. Oh, my God. Which is why we need as women to get our poop in a group. Like, yeah. Stop and the junk food. Stop feeding it to our children. Stop it. Stop it, it. stop it. Stop it. Your mitochondria are on your side. And they, you know, women, like, we're so strong and we're always working behind the scenes. And here's another example. By the way, gift to us from Mother Nature, one of the gals, right? She, you know, and I honestly, go into PubMed. Google, I'll send you an article, I'll send you one of our presentations. I, I link everything to PubMed articles so everybody knows I don't make any of this up. Mm -hmm. By the way, that whole story, understanding the history of mitochondria, was discovered by a woman, MIT professor, in the 60s. I'm here in Boston, right? I can see my MIT right across out the window. She was heckled for 10 years by her peers until they realized she was right. She was right. Wow. So, so this has been known since the 60s, but who was going to tell you? Huh? Mm. Fascinating. Really? Oh my gosh. So fascinating. Unbelievable, right? So your body wants to help you stay healthy. So stop eating the sugar and the protein and the stuff that's not good for you. Treat yourself with love. Self-care is giving yourself the nourishment that you need, the sleep that you need, the fresh air, the exercise. It's not selfish to give yourself self-care. You're only feeding the lining, the pockets of these huge corporations that want you to buy their, their addictive sugar you are better than that. You deserve more than that. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Catherine. <laughs> one, one, last, one last question from me, and then I'll, I'll see if Sky has a final question as well. And this is just because at the beginning of our interview, before we hit record, you said, I'm going to tell everybody my age because I want them to know. So I wanted to give you that opportunity. Sure. I'm almost 67. Maybe. I'll be 67 in two months. Um, so I'm inching towards 70, okay? I don't have any wrinkles, and I, I'm not bragging about this, but it's because, and I don't have Botox, so everything moves. <laughs> Honestly, this works. And I have had so many people tell me, just like Sky did, how their skin improved. And it's all just, your skin is nourished from blood. I mean, yes, we put topical creams on, but the true, your cells in your skin, just like all the cells in your body, and you have over 30 trillion of them, they are growing every single day. Now, when you nourish them with something that's healthy, they're going to grow back healthier. Just like when you build a building, you can make it out of sand, or you can make it out of something, a structure that's going to withstand a lot of you know, issues. You want structure. You want good, solid nutrition to feed your skin, which is also, by the way, it's fed by your blood vessels. And if you have nourishment in your blood, it's going to nourish your skin from the inside. I tell people beauty is an inside job. Um, so again, sugar, smoking, uh, they're very damaging to your skin as they are. You can't see the inflammation in your heart and your cells, but you can see it in your skin. It is an organ, by the way. Um, so uh, if not, it, 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 and by, when you're younger, your skin turns over about every 24 days. As you get older, it takes longer to, the cellular turnover is a, is a longer one. But I look better and younger now than I did 10 years ago. And the only thing I've done differently is add spirulina and chlorella to my daily routine. And I've been taking it for 13 years. <laughs> mm, thank you so much. Sky, do you have a final question for Catherine? I do. Not that I am promoting this in any way, shape, or form. I personally do not drink anymore. But I did um, catch your little slip of, of like, oh, hangover. And I was like, oh, that got me thinking. Like, if somebody does decide to, like, have a little bit of alcohol or something, 
would that be like I guess chlorella would probably be more beneficial because it's the detoxifying yes would yes. that be good to conquer a hangover and like when would you recommend taking it before or after uh, I would recommend you take it when you're finished drinking uh, so I would leave it on your bedside before you go out at night um, and uh, because if you take it before drinking it's sort of like a scrub-a-dub it will it will it pulls the alcohol right out of your bloodstream you are sober in an hour and a half and you will never have a hangover. So we, for a while, we were working with wine tasters. They were taking it before wine tasting because they didn't want to get drunk. Uh, so they it kept them sober. But most people take it after they finish drinking. You will need the full 30 tablets, though, um, to, to pull it out. And you'll wake up fresh as a daisy. Um, my dream is in, you know, it could take five, 10 years that these are made available at every bar. Maybe we can stop the damage, you know, accidents, drinking and driving, because literally you are stone sober in an hour and a half. We've had people go to um, Vegas and tell us that we saved their bachelorette party because they felt so great the next morning after partying. So um, uh, it, uh, it's it's unbelievable. And again, it's all natural. It, it does it because of the hard cell wall that's attaching the alcohol converts into toxins in your blood. Uh, also, chlorella is very high in glutathione, which is also a uh, detoxing antioxidant, particularly in your liver. So, um, so and the chlorophyll is very cleansing, but the chlorella is the only one that's detoxing, not the spirulina. Right. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. Super cool. Yeah. Yeah. It is. It is amazing. <laughs> Catherine, do you have any final words that you would like to share with our audience today before we wrap up? Well, I just, um, a couple of things I, I, I mentioned at the beginning, but algae isn't new. It's just new to you. And so, um, and it's been gifted to us by mother nature four billion years ago and used safely in other countries for over 70 years. Um, so that's number one, you're just not familiar with it because it doesn't grow here. Uh, number two, what do you have to lose? It's a food. Um, and we're right now our, our, our food is so devoid of nutrition. Our soils are so damaged. It's impossible, even if you did eat vegetables to be nourished properly. And this is people are getting sick because they're not getting the nourishment they need. And there's too many toxins spirulina gives you the nourishment and chlorella pulls out the toxins and together they work very harmoniously with your body um, no contraindications um, so it's just give it a try that's all i would ask you and in fact we have a 20 percent discount code if you want to visit our website the code is kick sugar and it works on everything we have really fun canisters that you can leave at home. They have a little opening and you can just pour the can the tablets into your hand. Um, we have travel, travel pouches um, and just, or just come to the website and learn because we write a very comprehensive blog every month. Um, but now that you know about spirulina and chlorella, you'll find out that it, you know it's, it's coming. You can't keep it down much longer. Uh, the rest of the world is discovering it. Um, so you might as well start learning how to use it now. Why cheat yourself? Why wait? To f I tell people it's never too late to feel great. <laughs> yes. Awesome. I love it. Catherine, thank you so much for your company, for your research, for your time and sharing your passion for this superfood with us today. I appreciate it. You're very welcome. And thank you for everything that you do. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in this week. If you would like more interviews, more information, and more inspiration on how to break up with sugar, go to my YouTube channel, Kick Sugar Coach, or my website, kicksugarcoach.com. See you next week.